What happened to the music? I hit play. Still spinning. A little slow. Yeah! Why is everything slow today? Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this here Halloween for fun a weekend. Me and ghetto boys trick treat in. All right. All right. Hey, it's uh, what? What day is it? It's Wednesday. Man, it's hard to keep up with what day it is. slow it's even slow to pause what's going on anyways let me remind you that trading's risky not appropriate for everyone your past performance good or bad is not necessarily indicative of future results please stay small stay humble focus on the long term and never risk money you cannot afford to lose welcome to forex dot today the youtube channel with 12,000 foreign exchange traders gathering together every single day to align their satellites. This is pre-New York Open. This is London Lunch. So we're here to collaborate. Good morning. Oh, we already got three thumbs down? Cool, right on. Thank you, thumbs down people, for logging in and uh, interacting. YouTube appreciates that. Cool. So... What do you want you to do today? Dollar pairs, yen pairs, gold, oil, and Bitcoin. What do you think? Smell like a plan? We'll go over the technicals. We'll go over the fundamentals. And we do this because I want to teach you how to put together trade plans. So you can plan not necessarily for just for today. Actually, I'm more concerned about what you think about tomorrow and next week and the rest of the month. That's much more interesting than what's going to happen in the next two hours. You should already have that plan. So ask questions, check your negativity at the door if you got it. Help your fellow trader find their way. And Nim says what? Wayne, yesterday you mentioned, you, oh, my book, cool. And you bought it and read, read it based on, <laughs> you bought my book and read it. Well, let me tell you, it takes longer to write a book than read it, apparently. So anyways, well, cool. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, Wiley Publishing thanks you for making them a little bit richer. But, so that's very cool. All right. So without further ado, let's get on with it. I'd like to remind you that I am the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. So please, if you are benefiting from these webinars, if you're enjoying the community, if you're finding the, the, the training is helpful to you, please pay that back. Visit tradersway.com. Give them an opportunity to earn your loyalty and respect. They want to be your broker. Remember, a successful trader keeps on trading, trading and trading, trading, slowly growing their lot size because their account size is growing. And that is, for a broker, the dream client. So put it this way. I'm charged with the duty of making you a dream client. And the only way to do that is to teach how to get filthy, stinking rich slow. Because you're not going to gamble your way to heaven. You know what I'm talking about? 
All right, so focus says Swiss franc. BCM wants yen pairs. Olin wants tulips. Too much volatility for me. What else would you like me to cover today? I'll tell you where I'm at. I got empty cans of soda and, and empty bowls of cereal on my desk. I have an apple I haven't eaten. I'm drinking coffee I made on Monday. I have a headache. Oh, I got empty beer cans on my desk. Do you think I spent a lot of time in my office? I was worried. Uh, I was worried that the liquor store was going to get clo uh, shut down. So I went to the local liquor store and I bought all their Japanese Sapporo Reserve. <laughs> I bought enough where the liquor store gave me a discount. They felt bad for me. Anyways. Strongest versus weakest. All right. Well, Stanton, that's called a relative strength exercise. Okay. I saw the czar. I saw Noki, saw Dollar, Aussie Yen, saw all these cool. Well, why don't we do that then? Let's start with the relative strength exercise. Get down to the basics. 4X101. German beer is the best, dude. I like some German beer for sure. Okay. But I'm a Pilsner lager kind of guy. And the Japanese cold filter there's, and uh, can I say, that's what I like. Do I have to stretch for the relative strength exercise? Yeah, I think so. Got to have your yoga pants on. Lululemon. I got my Lululemons on. <laughs> Belgian, yeah, I like Belgian beer for sure, but again, not the same, but I, I do like it. And the thing I like, uh, I used to go to this um, Belgian um, bar in San Francisco when I lived there. And the thing I liked about it is they had something like, you know, 77 different types of beer <clears throat> and 77 different beer glasses. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I liked about it. Every beer had its own unique glass with its own unique shape. Um, but anyways, let's move on. Get on with it. All right. So, oh yeah, we're going to do relative strength. So let's take a look at this. Make sure they're all in the same time frame. Let's go hourly because we're just concerned in the moment. Hour, 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 and hour. And sometimes resetting this just to make sure all the indicators are up to date. So go four hour, one hour. Okay. The dollar is on the denominator, the dollar's on the denominator, the dollar's on the denominator, the dollar's on the numerator. So, if what we're doing is a relative strength exercise, we're trying to find out whether the dollar is strong or weak, but we will also, based on how strong or weak versus the other currencies, figure out what other currencies are strong and weak. So we're, we're isolating the dollar here, but we're learning more than just the dollar, okay? So let's uh, make sure they're kind of about the same amount of clicks. Yeah, this has to click out maybe one. Okay, yeah, that's all right. It's not quite perfect, but anyways. What do we think about this? What direction is this going? It's actually hard to tell. When you're using pivot points, for example, this is meh, right? Okay. Okay. So the dollar and the pound are about the same. You could argue up here. You could argue down here. And that's the issue. That's what makes it range bound. Okay, so let's move on. Kiwi versus dollar. This seems like it's more up than down currently, right? 
In fact, it's set to be a bear, but that goes back for several days. So let's change these to bullish pivots. And you can see there's definitely buyers here. Okay. Buyer, uh, almost a buyer and a buyer. Okay. So this seems like more up than down on this time frame. Okay. With that being said, that means the Kiwi dollar is stronger than the US dollar. So we'll put USD weak. Okay. We'll look at Aussie during this period. Now, this is a perfect buy. That is perfect buy using monthlies. Th this is set up for day trading. This is set up for swing trading. Doesn't really matter. But this is a perfect bullish swing. Doesn't get any more perfect than that. The question is, do you buy it down here? That's what we were talking about yesterday. But anyways, it looks like it's trying to head back up, which would indicate uh, over this period of time, especially if I give it one click in, Uh, more bullish than bearish. So as far as US dollars concerned, weak. Then if you look at this, and by the way, the USD CAD was some good trading. You can't see it on this chart. I can change the template, but you'll see that this is actually pretty good trading. And it looks like over this period, because the US dollars on the numerator, and this is falling, that means US dollars weak. So here, dollar is weak. And then here is neutral. So, uh, but slightly weak versus the pound so weak okay so based on relative strength right now the us dollar is weak usd weak now can you see the pound is the lagger well therefore we can also see the great british pound is weak okay we can see Aussie's trying to get to a double top. Kiwi's trying to get to a double top. CAD is trying to get to a double bottom. So commodities priced in dollar are relatively moderately, let's say moderately strong. Okay. Benji made 250 pips from Kitty CAD. Right on. Good job. That's a nice swing. So let's take a look at CAD then. Help out, uh, help out our friend Benjamin. <clears throat> okay. Ah, misclick. Sorry. What I'm trying to get to is what do we know? So you can see I've already kind of started this exercise. What do we know? Okay, what do we know? What do we know? Okay, back out to a four hour. Nice, okay. So, down, down, down. If bulls exist, they're going to play in here somewhere or in here somewhere. Okay. Okay. I like to have more information, but we know that that's what's happening. So if you're going to move one more down, it's got to go down, 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 up, up, sell, down, 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 down. Okay. So that's what we know, but let's add some more details. Let's add a layer of complexity to this because I'd like a little bit more information. So for example, I want to know where we've been and where we're going. Life is like a box of chocolates. Okay. Anyways, let me change this as well. Let me update this. I want a little more info. A little more info. Uh, let's put a three on there. Okay. In fact, and let, let me get a little less info. Change this up a little bit. Yeah, that's what messes everything up. So that's last month was just a weirdo month. All right. So right now, even monthlies are not that helpful. Let's 
so it was better with one. So we have to pay attention a little more to the weeklies than the monthlies because the monthlies are so wide. So we got some sort of price action. So in this point, it's bullish up back to the 21 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 up back to the whoa, 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 up. And the whoa, whoa, whoa is like, eh, you might want to pay attention to double tops. Okay. Anyway, so now we got this low, 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 low. So this goes now from bullish to neutral, if you will, because this moving average is showing you neutrality. But I think what you would be looking for here is at this point here, the, the lower high, lower low, sets you up for M3 selling, right? You're going to sell all the M3s. Okay. I think is what you're going to, how you're going to look at it. Okay. Overall, I'd still be quite concerned because I think if you measure from some sort of bottom to some sort of top, depending from where you measure, maybe you measure from this gap, we're sitting on an average really right where we're real it's really like maybe say it this way bulls are going to buy it at the m2 and, and fight you this way bears want to sell it at the m3 and fight that way okay yeah and baby g says the market is largely un 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 undecided and it's amazing because it's been like that for a week or so right But remember, we talked about this coming where when you get the consolidation, that's where most new traders lose most of their money. Have you noticed that? Has that been your case when you look at your past history? That it's the, the consolidation periods where you lose your money? It's not the range. Like you, you think this is where you make your big money. Well, amateurs tend to miss most of it right? <clears throat> but it's this period where people actually lose. Because here you could just be stupid lucky and, you know, you can have bad trade after bad trade. As long as you're a bull, you made money, right? But it's this stuff where, um, you know, bulls are, or, or bears are selling low and then they're buying high and then they're, you know, and they're, they're doing everything backwards and, and nothing comes of it. Swinging both ways like a bo broken gate. Right. Um, so the advice here is to recognize what's happening and trap it. And if it goes, makes a new lower low, you're going to sell the lower high. If it makes a new higher high, you're going to buy the new higher low. And by looking at this, currently it looks more likely to be a bear than a bull. Just the way the things have set up, if you look at your pivots. Down, 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 up, up, and sell there next week. Makes a lot of sense to me. Up, 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 down, down. That doesn't make sense, actually, right? Uh, and of course, these pivots are going to change if you do get higher highs and stuff. But right now, it doesn't actually make sense if you understand pivot points. Okay. Okay. I've been giving a lot of caution in the analysis, not, not on this trade, but on many of the yen trades, many of the yens have hit their targets for the week, right? Many targets have hit by Tuesday, the Sunday afternoon targets. If you're a bull and many of those yen pairs have hit their targets. So what happens if you hit your target on a Tuesday guys? It's hard. We actually talked about that last night as well, where we know as disciplined traders, we know to walk away from trades like that, but we also know we can't do it. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Uh, 
unfortunately, you know, the process isn't working for me because I'm just not getting enough sleep and I'm not spending enough time with my family while, while even my wife is sick. Uh, so what you don't understand is after my two hour webinar yesterday, it still took close to 90 minutes to, to get that up online. So I'm giving you, you let's say another two hours of webinars a day, but I'm spending four hours of my life doing it. So, uh, it's, uh, I got to find a more efficient way. Anyway, so consider trapping, uh, but if I had to bet, probably more down than up right now, just so I guess you'd have to look at it this way and just say, yeah, well, it's currently that way. Uh, baby G, I guess, you know, like for example, how often do you hit weekly swing targets? when the market's ranging not often and if we're doing it now it's because last month was such a big month that our pivots are off a bit because it, it's basing on last month right okay so really it shouldn't be doing that baby g but it might be doing it this month But it shouldn't be, but it might be. Okay, come on. All right, let's do the time warp. Okay. True that. No, uh, Victor, it's not the necessarily the time commitment. It's the after the webinar. See, I don't mind doing the webinar. And if you notice, I could, I could have done yesterday's webinar in half the amount of time, but I tried to allow for a lot of conversation and a lot of conversation, right? Information, conversation, detail. Uh, so I could have, you, you probably would have been okay if I only did a one hour webinar, but I did a two hour webinar. But then it also took me another 90 minutes of work on top of that. And that's the problem. Like I need to, I need to, spend time with my family, right? I need to tuck my children in. I need to go to bed earlier, all that kind of stuff. So well, Forex uh, trading channel, the issue is it has to download to my machine first. It's okay. And when for some reason, when it saves on the cloud on Zoom, Zoom decides that we don't want video, we only want audio. So whatever. So it's not that, guys. It's just I need a more efficient system. So I might switch out of Zoom. All right, so yens now. Let's do another relative strength exercise. Hourly. Euro yen, hourly. Pound yen, hourly. Kiwi yen, hourly. And Aussie yen, hourly. I, I want to know if, are they all going up or are they all going down? Well, recently up, recently up, recently up. Up and up. Cool. So right now across the board, Japanese has been Japanese yen has been weak. Okay. So that's good. So you may want to be a bull. So let's start with Kitty Cad. What do we know? This is the exact price <clears throat> you want to buy Cad Yen at if you're a bull. That's it. 
we had a conversation like uh, the market opened here. You're a bull. How, how do you wait the six or seven hours for this to set up? And then when do you decide to take it? And what do you do? The five A cross, but it's the but it's below the twenty one. The twenty one's falling. And how do you, blah, 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 how do you make a decision? And how do you pull the trigger? What's the secret? And I say, oh well, here's the secret. You knew you wanted to buy it two days earlier. You knew the price was around seventy five. In fact, seventy five eleven. So, and it opens in the buy zone. So you could buy right then and there and just risk these pips, or you do this and you're done. And you play it like if it comes down, I'm in. And of course you'd, you'd be in the, the next day. You could, you could adjust things, right? Because remember, let's say this is probably about 24 hours, right? So you, you play it as best you can in Asia, you throw this down, you use your OCO tool, right? And then you wake up the next day and you're here and you're like, oh, cool, right on. Next day you're up in here, right on, move your stop. Okay. So I was thinking maybe we spend a week. I don't know if it'll be next week, but I was thinking about with the live trading group spending a week just practicing using limit orders to get into trades because I, I'm trying to take the time component away for you guys so you just simply have a, a technical trade plan on top of a fundamental bias and you spend let's say one hour and you drop your entries and walk away and you're done for the week. Baby G says, ain't a fan of limit orders. Nor, there, nor am I, but there's definitely way, there is a definite way, there definitely is a way to do it properly. Okay. By the way, check. All right, let, let's talk about this. The, the training videos. I changed some of the settings yesterday. Can you guys watch, let's say the first one taking control? Is that one now working? Oh, Brad, the placement is the easiest part. Yeah, not a problem. We can do that. That part is predefined by technical analysis. So that's easy. Guys, I'm asking about the video. I don't know how much of a lag we have. In the COVID-19 training video courses, no, fundies will work. I'm talking about the ones that are actually hosted on Vimeo. There's like a taking control course. There's another one on maybe on MT4. There's another one on the, the, the basics of Forex. Uh, yes, baby G, absolutely. So let's see. So no one answered the question. So I'll just move on. Cool. All right. 
So let's take a look at this one. You see? This is the one that's in a big range, but notice the size of the range, right? So if you're buying off a bottom, which we talked yesterday, right? And then you got there, and then last night you bought here. So let's do the trade plan from last night uh, during the Asian session. Okay. The, I always ask, what do we know? Well, we know we got this. Okay. So what would the trade plan be? And the trade plan would be, or was, or down into this and up. You see, that's what we did yesterday in Asia. Yeah, day trading works, guys. That would make sense. I'm asking about the other ones, like the taking control videos. People said that w w wasn't working, and, and someone else said the, a couple of other ones. And that's because those ones are on Vimeo. So I changed the video, Vimeo settings. But the other one should work. Shouldn't be a problem. I think there was only two of the courses that weren't loading. Okay. Okay. It is now too late to buy. It. Yeah, that's why we have trade plans. Right? So like we had, you had, we met last night, probably, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there was tons, there was hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to be ready for that. Okay. Is it too late now? Well, I mean, you have to make a decision on that. But the issue is, is it too late now? Is that the issue? No, the issue is, where were you 12 hours ago? Why didn't you have it planned, right? That should be the, the bigger one. That's the bigger question. Okay. Okay. Go here. And the problem is we're getting closer and closer and closer to a target. So again, this is when the swing trading group met Sunday night. If you're a bull, you're sitting on the bull buy price, and here's the target. So the big question we had last night is, do you want to go again? This says take a walk. Okay. So it comes down to a couple of things. Are you going to bet against an existing trend? Well, there's some risks associated with that. Or do you want to try again and go on another trip to the to the north, the Great White North? Well, the problem with that is it's uh, uh, it's late. It's like iffy. It's like yeah, it could, it might, it probably will. But this is the obvious, stupid, obvious entry if you're a bull. Okay. Now you could have been a bear on Sunday. And you know for a fact you can't sell there. So it's sort of equally powerful. To half the group, this is an obvious buy. To the other half the group, it's an obvious not sell. Okay. So like the obvious occurred. And even a bear would tell you, yeah, if this goes up from here, we're going to go up to 135. Even a bear knew that. So what do you do after? Well, everything after that move is quite mediocre, right? Thank you, Brad. I appreciate that. I really do. Okay. <clears throat> uh, well, Benjamin, the, that talk for pound yen, 
had more to do with what I'm hoping for with the stock market. <clears throat> okay. But what I'm also trying to teach you is there's different time frames are useful in different ways, right? And so even though this is, let's say on this time frame, technically still up, st technically still bullish, if you didn't know anything about pivot points, you would certainly just buy the dip. Okay? So if you if you if pivot points didn't exist to you, you would just buy this dip. You see that? And you don't need moving averages and stuff. We can kill all that. Kill the 5.8. I kind of like the 21.55 in a trend, so we'll leave that there. Okay, the 21 is above the 55, you're a bull. So now you got, you got this, it's been a bull since there. And we also have price action. Up, 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 down, down, buy, up, 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 down, down, buy, up, 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 up. So if you didn't know anything about pivot points, this would be an obvious buy. Now we do have pivot points, so we know this is a cautionary area, okay? Like for example, if you bought this, you knew this would be the top. <laughs> so it's helpful. Okay. One of the things we talked about is congruency. We're not necessarily buying the pound. We're, we're more likely selling the yen. So I want to see all the yen pairs going up. Okay. So I said, if you were going to do this, because you got to remember, this is an out. So conservative discipline traders are not even supposed to be in this. Right? So you should be looking at the market, you know, uh, this way, like, um, okay, none of this exists. So you might look at a Fibonacci retracement, you might look at a full regression, but that's what you'd be thinking about, okay? That if you were following the rules of engagement, you're out here. So now your next question as a bull is, do I buy back in? That's what we were talking about last night. And very often this comes down to your, your alpha, your ability to make the right decision. You might not have as many tools as you would like to make that decision. Um, but if you're a bull, you shouldn't be counter-trending against it. Uh, that's what I've been saying forever. You can expect it and maybe even scalp it or something. But if you were a bull here, you were a bull here. And, you know, as you approach one standard deviation from the mean to the downside, you'd be a bull here. And you'd be a bull here in the future. Okay. So we got that, that, that. Uh, Kiwi. What was the plan 12 hours ago? Yeah, they, Baby G says, you sh dude, you should grab Wayne's complete course going for insane price right now. Uh, that link is in the description below. Okay. One of the things we talked about yesterday too was this opened so hot the day before that it didn't even retrace to give you a proper day trade entry 
Now it gave you a dynamic support entry, but not a day trade. It didn't allow you to day trade because it was too bullish. Even if you're a bull, it was too bullish. So I said, well, watch how it plays this move. Like it's not paying attention. Oops. It's not paying attention to what a day trader would want. This is more of a swing trade, right? Notice how it's playing the Fibonacci retracement of the bigger move. Okay, because typically what day trading looks like is this, up, 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 down, down, buy, up, 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 down, down, buy, up, 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 up. That's easy, we do it all the time. Right? But for some reason, this is playing a, a, a bigger game. Okay, so write that down in your notes. How do you trade a scenario like that? Okay. Okay. All it did was come back 50%. Okay, should you know what I'm talking about? Well, I don't know if it's the, a bigger move per se, because, I mean, I'd, put, I'd look at it this way. The decisions were made on a different time frame. So I was saying th these are not day trades. So somebody planned this out on this time frame. All right, so here's what they did. They identified a bottom, right? They identified a top. And they're playing it that way, right? This is more of an institutional trade. They're not pissing around with a 15-minute chart day trading. Day trading? For an institutional investor, you got to be joking, right? That's all. So you have to recognize that. Now, the risk you're taking, of course, is it can also do that. So that's why you got to pay attention to the key levels. Okay. All right. Let me ask you something. When a market is out of position. I'm trying to get rid of this drawing tool. There we go. Um, when a market is out of position, what are you supposed to do next? How do you trade that? Well, Samuel's right on it. The 21 EMA on the four hour. You got it. So here's the, uh, here's the move. We found ourselves out of position up here. It went a little higher, came all the way back, hit the four hour 21 and there's Oscar Mike on the move. Now, isn't it interesting that I recorded that in a video for you as one of the rules of engagement for that exact scenario? If it's out of position, then, right, 4H21. Pretty cool observation, huh? Out of position's out of position, bro. It might just simply be helpful to the decision-making process, okay?
Okay. Mine's got a bug. I never know why. Anyways. All right. Reaffirm my fundamental bias. Bullish. Confirm current trend in the market. Up. Identified Asia fade. Asia fade yesterday was we were up here when I did the webinar. So there's the fade and then we would assume up. Cool. So I re identified that. So oops, come on now. Identified that. Observe the maturity of the trend. It's actually a little too mature. We're going to hit, you can see price line here. So I'm a little concerned about that. So I'll have to manage my stop appropriately. Check that. Ensure there's no counter, tra counter trend setup. Well, there might actually be, but we might have already had it. Okay. So I'll have, again, I'll have to pay attention. It's definitely cautionary. Establish your price. So the price last night would have been 66.66. Observe a reversal pattern. Of course, it happened in there. So let's get a little closer. So we were here in the Asian session yesterday. I think we were about here. The plan was this is our buy zone. Okay, cool. Came through, tickled around. London boys saw it was low, so they bought it here. Isn't that cool? Thank you, London boys. We knew what they were going to do before they even did it. How cool is that? So now what? Well, my guess is a little more up and then some down and then some up tomorrow. Okay. You're so cold. You're so cold. Like, like the checklist said, be cognizant of living up there. Oh, cool, Stanton. Okay, USD yen. Now, here's the interesting thing. Uh, that's, I'm sorry to say, uh, cold play. Okay, USDN, do you, do you see why it's not here? So Stanton, why is it not here? Guillaume says, hey, uh, when do you move your stop, uh, stop loss to break even? After we print a higher high, a higher low and a new higher high. Oh, I like Cold Blade too.
Come on, Stanton. Oh, Stanton doesn't know. Because they are both funding currencies, as uh, Highlander has stated. Dollar funds business transactions around the world. Yen funds business transactions around the world. So let's put it this way. I'm a, I'm a, right? This is how you explain it. It's like, hi, my name is Wayne, and I am a global macro trend trader. This tells you everything you need to know about me. Okay. So I'm trading global macro trends. Essentially risk on or risk off. Okay. So if I trade this way, Stanton, are you listening? I'm talking to you specifically and you're still blotting down things. Come on, pay attention. So if I am a global macro trend trader, you're telling me to pit something strong versus something strong or something weak versus something weak. So I tend not to trade the USD yet. Now you can for sure. Okay. But that's not something I... I care about that much. I want to know is the, okay, I wanted, I am looking for scenarios where both yen and dollar are weak. So there's no way I would trade them if I found that, uh, those market conditions. Or I want to trade USD and yen when they're both strong. And when one is you know, and when they're not quite equal, I tried and I, I, I don't know, you'll see market conditions will change and, and uh, I probably won't trade as much because if dollar is significantly stronger than yen or significantly weaker than yen, typically you're trading a relative strength issue and not a global macro issue. Okay. And I'm not a relative strength guy per se can be but that's generally not what i do so i just showed you about six japanese yen pairs that have moved up and hit their entire target for the entire week well on their way to hitting their target for the entire month and usdn's done almost nothing we moved from 107 to 108 so this has moved half as much as all the other trades that i set up for people Do you get that, Stanton? So it went up 100 pips, but everything we else, everything else we looked at went up 150 to 300 pips. So like, eh, this is meh. Okay. Now it's technical analysis, but to be a global macro trend trader, you, you're going to need fundamentals as well. And so this was like, this was tradable for sure, but it was mediocre. The entry is not as good. The price is not as good. Uh, but, you know, you'll, you'll, get, you'll get something like this now. And so if, if, if the market's going to continue risk on, you'll buy this and make 50 pips. But if you buy a pound yen, you'll probably make 250 pips. Same trade. Stanton, when I first started trading, pound yen, I think, was 12 pips minimum. So the way I look at it, everything is cheap now. Everything. How to use VIX. Okay, let's do a quick VIX presentation. VIX. VIX has to do with the S&P 500.
happy. Okay. And when all market participants that are buyers of the S and P five hundred, S and P five hundred futures, right? When they are certain it's going up, VIX is low. Okay. Let me give you an example. You build a mountain, sorry, you build a cabin on the side of a mountain. And down in the valley, way down below, there's a wonderful, beautiful river in which you like to go fishing. How much flood insurance do you buy? Come on, let's do a behavioral finance analysis. How much flood insurance do you buy for your cabin way at the Way, on the, way up on the side of the mountain, looking down onto the valley where there's a river. Okay. Not very much. Okay. So, the VIX has to do with buying insurance on the S&P 500. So when you're absolutely certain it's going up, there's no requirement for insurance. However, can you actually make money trading VIX? Absolutely. Absolutely, baby G. Okay. So when you're absolutely certain, or let's say the vast majority of market participants are absolutely certain it's going up, they're not buying insurance. They don't have any fear. But if something comes along to increase people's anxiety or fear that the stock market might come down or if it's overpriced or something or there's an exogenous supply or exogenous shock of some sort, then they get to worry, but they don't want to exit their trades. Okay? So what they do instead is they buy options to hedge hedge okay and the ratio of options per contract the i don't know the math but the relationship between the options to hedge the futures contract is what the vix is so when VIX is going up, people are buying options to hedge like crazy. They're buying insurance. Okay? So your cabin, how much fire insurance should you buy since you're hanging up on the side of the mountain? <laughs> fire insurance might be interesting, right? So baby G says, so it's a hedge for U.S. for, well, not the U.S. stock market, the S&P 500 specifically. <laughs> okay. Mantis is like, we, we don't have insurance. <laughs> By the way, the richer you are, the more insurance you own. Just so you know. Because you're not worried about making money. That's easy. But you're worried about losing it. <clears throat> so Baby G says, oh, I didn't know. I thought it was a general volatility index. No. So I just, I just gave you an education. Okay. Okay. So when is stock market trading the lowest when is there the least amount of volatility or let's say volume when's the least amount of volume in the stock market that is correct daniel july In fact, the period between July and August. See, Americans take their summer holidays in July. Europeans take their 
uh, holidays in August. So one time I was in Zurich in August and in the middle of the day, you can see entire buildings were empty. Okay. So if nobody's trading, nobody's buying uh, options on their S&P 500. You understand that? There can't be a spike in S&P in in options buying if nobody's buying. Does that make sense? If nobody's in the market, then nobody's buying options. So VIX will be low. When, <clears throat> when traders return from holidays and they're like, oh my God, my S&P 500 position. <laughs> what do they do now? There'll be some volatility, right? And most likely VIX will go up. Maybe not a lot, but it'll go up. And if something happens in October and freaks everybody out, VIX spikes. It'll go from 15 to 50 and you just, just, just made a fortune. Uh, you'll have to look that up, baby Jean. Yeah. Well, I think it's overly, I mean, it. yes, it is a fear index, but I want you to understand what it is. I don't want you to have any misconceptions. It doesn't have to be fear. It just has to be volatility. You get that? So, like, what happens from the middle of July to, to middle of September? Fear? What if no fear happens? VIX will still go up. In my humble opinion. Maybe not a lot because there's no fear. But just the fact there's more volume, more traders in the market, more market participants, it should at the very least push it from, let's say, 15 to 20 or maybe 22. It's not really high. No one's that afraid, but they are buying options. Why? Because they're insuring their cash positions. So it doesn't have to be fear. But the thing is, when it goes from 15 to, to 22, nobody talks about it. And then it, then it jumps to 50 because something happens and freaks everybody out. Well, you're like, well, I bought it at 15 because I'd know it'd go to 22. Did I know it was going to go to 50? No, but it did. Thank you. So I think, in my opinion, it starts with volume. It's a volume index. It's not really, so don't get all caught up in that. But I like to buy it low. And then if it goes from volume to, to fear, good. I'll, I'll get paid too much money. Right? And the Wayne McDonald Family Trust will make some donations to charity. Okay, I got to burn through these other trades. Let's go. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying, Mantis. July, the market's flat. Bitcoin. Okay, we broke out of this range, so I got rid of that drop. As 
far as we're concerned, this is going up to uh, maybe a tickle of 8,000. And this would be the big exit. Oh, come on. X marks the spot. Bitcoin. All right. Gold. Gold. Here's what we planned yesterday in Asia. Let me back out. I identified that is old resistance. I identified that as a higher high. We dropped this down. There's our buy zone. I plotted this. And uh, you should be long and strong. And there's the plan. Whoop, whoop. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Give you a closer look. Okay, there's our buy price. You're so cold. You're so cold. It's a little repetitive. It's cold play. You're so cold. Okay, so we'll see if uh, if she breaks above. What do you mean gold blaze repetitive? You're like, oh my god, you're gonna do a 12 minute rendition of this in your concert? Like, oh everybody loves it. It's our big song. You're like, this is the big song? How about Genesis, right? So take, take me home. Because I don't remember. Take, take me home. <laughs> They're like, this is the big, <laughs> big 12 minute version of this one. You're like, oh my God. Right? But it was the 80s. Everyone was on cocaine, so. <laughs> They're like, I love this part. Uh, all right. So we did gold, Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Give me some oil. Uh, Luis, you have to take it further yourself. The relationship between VIX and yen, you should be able to figure that out. Uh, if not, take the courses, man. They're 80% off. Okay. There, it's an indirect relationship, but yeah. Okay, if you're a bull, that's what you stink. What do we know? We know we got some 20 action and the buy for this week is 23.65. So we've already tickled it. So if you were a bull, you'd be looking for long. Love you long time. Drop into a five minute chart and check it out. Confusion. Da, da, da. Da, 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 singing. Hee hee hee. Oh. <laughs> oh my God.
home where I wanted to go home home <laughs> anyways KJ says, I got your book last week, Game Changer. Hey, you know, thank you guys. Like, I literally have carpal tunnel syndrome because I wrote that book. So 13, 14 years later, my arms still hurt. So I'm glad it's beneficial. Can you do me a favor and leave positive feedback on Amazon? Because it's just filled with people uh, raging hate. So if you don't hate me and you think it's not the worst book in the world, would you please document that at Amazon? Okay. So what's the issue here? The issue here is this is a stone cold bet. Thank you, KJ. What's the bet, guys? You're like, oh, this, this is good technical analysis. Yeah, it is technical analysis. But technical analysis is backward looking. Thursday OPEC meeting slash deal. This is a you're betting, if you're just looking at this and you're like, oh, I'm going to buy it here because it's an M2. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Technical analysis is what you do after you've made a decision, not why you made a decision. And if you're a master of the universe trading the energy complex, dude, the, the potential deal to be announced tomorrow is a thousand times more important than this nonsense. But if you trade this technically, you have to say, well, in the next 24 hours, we can get a, a situation where no deal is announced. Like Russia refuses to even go to the meeting tomorrow. What do you think happens to WTI? Oh, but what about your daily M2? My daily M2, my daily M2, right? Like, dude, this crashes bajonkers, okay? So you better have a stop loss, son. Okay? Well, put it this way, your customer. Putin is by far the richest person on earth. Saudi Arabian princes, yeah, they have oil. The prince of Russia, he has entire countries paying him money. So Putin, can he can push back. He can survive. He probably has $100 billion. He... He makes Bill Gates looks poor. Ah, uh, Mantis is funny. Yeah, okay, according to the Forbes 500, yeah, you thought Bezos was the richest. Well, how many drug dealer warlords and dictators are on the list? None. I mean, come on. Yeah. Putin probably has twice as much as Bezos. Okay, anyways, so he's like, you know what, biatch, Saudi Arabia biatches, I don't care. Because if you do this, you're going to make the, you know, the rest of the Russian people mad at you, not me. I'm not screwing people over. Okay. So anyways. 
Yeah, and Carlos brings up another point. Bezos has, let's say, what, $75 billion on paper. Putin has $75 billion in the bank. There's a difference, right? <laughs> the day trading, Jesus, is included in the special, the link below. It's in there. It's the taking control course. It's the uh, fundamental analysis course. It's the MT4 course. It's the day trading course. It's the swing trading course. It's the um, trade planning course. It's uh, the basic, uh, the original basic training course. Um, there's the chart templates are in there. Um, there's all kinds of downloads and stuff and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, so it's all there. And it's 80% off. Okay. Okay, no, that's right. So anyways, uh, so you got to play this wise. You need to hold your cards close. So maybe you're a buyer of this. That's cool. But understand, you might... So, like, I'll give you an example. I remember in the very, very, very early days of me trading from home. And I remember I stared at the chart... Oh my God, three or four hours from early, early in the morning and all that kind of stuff. And my wife was leaving the house and it was probably 7.30 in the morning or something. And she's going somewhere and, and I've been staring at my charts. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. And finally she's like, you're not going to kiss me goodbye? I'm like, okay. And I got up, I kissed her goodbye. I'll see you later. Have a wonderful time. Great. And I sat down and I missed the trade. Son of a... <laughs> Son of a... I waited four hours. And I missed it in that 42 seconds. Son of a... <laughs> Can you see, like, this is why I kind of, over time, started planning my trades on bigger analysis but it's like one of these things guys you could buy it right now and everything's good and and all of a sudden there's a trump tweet tomorrow's meeting meetings canceled down and it'll happen like now gone or you're in this trade now and here's the upside you're in the trade now you buy it. it's a good m2 that's great you had a plan yesterday by the way we had this planned yesterday and everything's good, and Trump sends a tweet, we're going to sign their deal tomorrow. Boom. We're back at 30 now. Now. Not a little bit, not quick, not by tomorrow. Now, today, now. Okay? So, if you're going to do it, do it. But recognize the risk and recognize what you're doing. Okay? Okay? Uh, Forex for Life, uh, I've gone an hour and a half, and I basically haven't slept, so I think I'm kind of out of juice. I'm drinking coffee from Monday. So uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of out, man. So I'll tell you what. What day is it today? Wednesday. Why don't we meet tomorrow? And of course, Swing Trading Group. I'll see you in about twelve hours. Yes, uh, less than half of you like today's video, so I have to apologize. I'm sorry that it sucked. Because if you're not wor willing to even just lean forward and go click with your mouse, that little amount of effort, then it must have been horrible. So I apologize. But let me tell you, if it was pretty okay, or maybe better, and you didn't click like, your mother's going to feel bad. She's going to say, oh, that's not my boy. My boy's polite.
So why don't you uh, document what you learned today? If you if you appreciated the VIX conversation, please document that in the recording comments. Say thank you. I enjoyed the VIX. Also, the in the comments below there are access to the the training video courses that are currently almost 80% off. You save way more than $1,000. You save way more. I think you save like $1,300. And trust me, it's not very expensive. It's 80% off. So there's a link to that. There's a link to tradersway.com. There's a link uh, to something else. Oh, probably MetaTraders to get the chart templates. And what else? Oh, and one other thing. Uh, there's not a link to it, but can you do me a favor? I'm trying to get FX boot camp above 10,000 subscribers because when that when you do that it unlocks some new features so would you take a moment here and go to youtube.com slash FX boot camp and subscribe again I'm trying to unlock some features there and if I can get that done, if I can get more than 10,000 subscribers, I might be able to do some funky things this summer. Can you do that for me, please? Um, so like, leaving likes, leaving comments uh, tells YouTube that, that uh, Forex.today is quality content. So that would just be supporting your community. Doesn't do a damn thing for me personally but it does do something for you and your fellow traders. Yeah, Benjamin says, I need 777. Uh, well, while you're at the FX Bootcamp YouTube channel, there's thousands of videos that I've uploaded there. Thousands. There's also a, a, a training course that I think is about an hour and a half long. Oh, uh, is it also there too? Thank you, Marie. The link to the... Uh, book if you want that so I appreciate that well Jesus says I only need the day trading course well you can pay the thousand dollars like everybody else or you can pay the four hundred dollars and get everything with it so if you want to pay a thousand dollars for the day trading course by all means or you pay four hundred and just get access to everything was I a U.S. Marine? I'm not even American. Okay. All right. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average.